This lecture is one in a series on process calculations, and the title is Basic Process Calculation Methodology. The content of this lecture is the overall aim and strategy of process calculations, and some basics, streams, fluxes, and stream variables, how to express concentrations, the degree of freedom analysis, the mass balance equations, what the total constraint is, and how to treat subsidiary process information. The overall aim is to map all fluxes of substances in process systems or in selected subsystems. The overall strategy is to clarify how many fluxes that the system includes. And if we take a look at the first subsystem in this water treatment plant, we see that we have four input fluxes and three plus one output fluxes. The next step is to collect as many equations as there are fluxes. Thereafter, we have to make sure that the equations that we have collected are fit for use, so that there are no contradictions. Then, we must solve the system of equations with appropriate methods either numerically or analytically. The physical flows take place in streams. That could be streams of liquid, streams of gas, or streams of solids. The rate of transport of substances are called fluxes, and they are expressed in terms of mass fluxes, could be kilograms per hour, kilograms, etc., or molar fluxes, could be moles per hour, moles, etc., or volume fluxes, and that is especially relevant for gases. We should also note that the molar fluxes and the volume fluxes are connected, since one mole of gas always has a fixed volume at a certain pressure and temperature. The fluxes are quantified in terms of stream variables. If we have a substance A in stream 1, the mass flux is called W1A. And the molar flux of a substance A in stream 1 is called F1A. So we need two qualifiers to express the fluxes. Concentrations can be expressed in terms of stream variables and in mass units or in molar units. For example, if we have two substances, A and B, in a stream 1, the mass flux is phi 1A equals the ratio between the mass flux of A in 1 divided by the two mass fluxes of A and B. And the molar fraction of A is x, 1A, equals the ratio of the molar flux of A divided by the sum of the molar fluxes in the stream. That is, the molar fluxes of A and B. The degree of freedom analysis aims to make sure that the system of equations representing a process has a unique solution, but also to organize the equations in a systematic manner. We can calculate the degrees of freedom as the number of stream variables minus the number of mass balances minus the number of subsidiary process information minus the number of specified stream variables, that is, the stream variables that we already know the value of. You can look at this as the number of stream variables represent the number of unknowns, while the other three parts represent the number of equations. For the degree of freedom analysis, we can have three cases. One is that the degrees of freedom is zero. That means that the problem is correctly specified. Another possibility is that the degrees of freedom is greater than zero. Then the problem is not specified, it is underspecified. 
and more independent equations are needed to solve the problem and to calculate all the stream variables. If the degrees of freedom is less than zero, then the problem is overspecified, which means that some informations are redundant and possibly in conflict with each other. In that case, we have to select which information that we should need. The mass balance always refers to a certain system delimited by its system boundary, and it refers to a certain substance, that is, an element or a component, and it should include all the relevant fluxes, and they should be expressed as stream variables. And for each component, one unique mass balance can be made for each system. Let's take an example. Let's consider a non-reaction system that is at steady state. And the system has one input stream, two output streams, and in each of these three streams we could find two components, A and B. We can now make a process chart showing the system with its system boundary and all the streams and the components. The general form for a non-reaction system at steady state is that the inputs equal the output. The mass balances expressed in mass units for A and B will be for A, W1A equals W2A plus W3A because W1A is an input while the A found in 2 and 3 are outputs from the system. And we can set up this corresponding equation for the component B. The mass balances for A and B in molar units are for A, F1A equals F2A plus F3A with a corresponding equation for the component B. Here we see that we have two components and we can set up two mass balances. Subsidiary process information is some information that is given about the system that we can use in our calculations. So when process calculations are performed, some equations are based on these information. Examples. The ratio between two stream variables or the fraction of conversion in a chemical reaction. However, it is important to make sure that the information given is independent. For example, only two of the equations below are independent. If WA equals 12 and WB equals 3, and we also have the information that the ratio between WA and WB is 4, then only two out of these three equations are independent. The third one can always be deduced from, the, from two other ones. The total constraint refers to what we can say about mass fractions and molar fractions. If a stream, I, contains n substances, each denoted j, then the sum of the fractional concentrations is by definition unity. Or, more simply, if we add up the mass fractions for a certain stream, the sum must be 1, and the same thing goes for the molar fractions. And we should also know that if stream 1 includes A and B, the mass or molar fractions are not independent of each other. The sum of them must always be 1. Finally, in more mathematical terms, we can say something about the mathematics that come from the degree of freedom analysis. When a process system is represented by a system of linear equations, it can be expressed or written in the form a times x equals y. Then the degree of freedom analysis is zero if a has an inverse, if the determinant of a is not equal zero, and also if the rank of a equals the dimension of the square matrix A.
The content of this lecture was the overall aim and strategy of the process calculations, and we also discussed the basic definitions of streams, fluxes, and stream variables, how to express concentrations, the degrees of freedom analysis, how to set up mass balances, what we mean with total constraint, and also how to st create subsidiary process information.